The Washington Post is reporting the special counsel, Robert Mueller, is investigating President Trump for possible obstruction of justice after firing FBI Director James Comey. Let's discuss with Ken Starr. He served as independent counsel on the Clinton Lewinsky investigation. Mr. Starr, good morning. Hey, good morning, Allison. So you've heard the Washington Post reporting that now uh, it seems to, Bob Mueller's investigation seems to have widened, not just Russia meddling, not just possible collusion, but whether or not the president engaged in some sort of obstruction of justice involving pressing James Comey to back off Michael Flynn, etc. Do you think there's a case there? It's too soon to tell. Uh, from what I have seen, and of course we don't know a whole lot, uh, the answer is no. Uh, but it is going to be investigated, and uh, so we will soon know. Obstruction of justice is really a very hard crime to make out. It, it's not just you want the investigation to go away, you suggest that the investigation goes away. You've got to take really affirmative action. Uh, and D Director Comey said in his testimony that even though the expression was hope, he took it as a directive. But what we know is he didn't do anything about it, right? That is, he did not dismiss the investigation or curtail the investigation. There's an expression of, of, of hope. So it becomes an interpretation. Mm. Uh, and th th I think it's just a very hard case to make out. And, you know, that's a good thing for all of us. Crimes should be difficult to prove. Well, and there's a presumption... Go ahead. Well, I mean, I agree. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree on that front. But just let's remind people what you're referring to, because this is what James Comey wrote in his prepared statement for the Senate Intel uh, Committee, so that just so everybody knows the language, I hope you can see your way clear to letting this go, to letting Flynn go. He is a good guy. I hope you can let this go. That's what James Comey says President Trump said to him about the investigation. Right. And as you say, he interpreted that as a directive. Listen to his testimony here. I took it as a direction. Right. I mean, this is the President of the United States with me alone saying, I hope this. I took it as this is what he wants he, me to do. Now, you, I, didn't, I didn't obey that, but that's the way I took it. Okay, so, Mr. Starr, are you saying that he would have had to have obeyed it in order for that to be obstruction of justice? No, no we're going to the intent of what is it that the president had in mind? He was expressing his literal language was hope. And I think that redounds to the benefit of the president. He's saying, golly, I sure wish this would go away. It's in the way of my agenda. I need to run the country. And this is a terrible distraction. I hope you can see your way clear. That, to me, just the language is far removed from a directive. My point is, the director of the FBI then didn't act on that. He rather just continued uh, as before and reported and memorialized it. But he did not then say, okay, ladies and gentlemen of the FBI, we are getting rid of this investigation at the direction of the president. Let me ask your impressions of Attorney General Jeff Sessions' testimony. What did you think about his general reticence um, and real refusal, actually, to share conversations that he had had with President Trump, it sounded like he was sort of citing executive privilege, but not that, <laughs> not that President Trump had cited that. Yeah, yeah it, it was a, a difficult middle ground, but the Attorney General was exactly right. He was protecting executive privilege. He wasn't asserting it. And so it's a fine distinction, but it's an important distinction. That is, you don't know what you're going to be asked. And when you're asked, as uh, he was asked continuously, repetitively, what conversations did you have with the president? To me, it was, in fact, uh, a, a very well-known drama. It would be well known that the Attorney General of the United States is not going to reveal in an open session without the opportunity for the president to, in fact, direct the Attorney General and to invoke a constitutional privilege called executive privilege that was upheld unanimously by the Supreme Court of the United States. Maybe it would be well-founded to invoke it, maybe it would not. But I think it was an, uh, a, a, an entire exercise uh -huh. that, in large part, was intended to embarrass the Attorney General. I think he but stood that, his ground. But, but, but him uh, refusing to say that in an open session, does that hold in a closed session also? The same thing, uh, exactly. So the, the, the closed session, I, I think the open session point was just the embarrassment mm -hmm. factor, uh, and it becomes headlines. 
that the Attorney General wasn't answering the question, but the Attorney General was on solid, in my judgment, one person's opinion, very solid constitutional ground in saying, I've got to protect the President's privilege as well as just the policy, which is exactly right. You don't, as an officer of the Justice Department, reveal your conversations mm -hmm. uh, with the President of the United States. It's just part of the separation of powers in our system. In your opinion, what is the biggest unanswered question? Well, I think the biggest unanswered question is, was there any sort of uh, collusion with the campaign? Uh, there's been no suggestion that the president, if there was collusion was, uh, with, with uh, uh, Russian operatives, that the president or the candidate himself was involved. But was there? I think the American people want to know the answer to that. And I think we're going to get it because we've got a very talented and determined uh, special counsel. But we also now have two committees, at least two committees, Senate Intelligence and now the Senate Judiciary Committee. We're going to get the answers. And very, very quickly, you were an independent counsel. Bob Mueller's role is special counsel. That means that he can be fired and you couldn't be. Could you have done your investigation under the threat of possibly being fired? Oh, yeah, I could be fired for a good cause. Same provision in the law as then. Uh, but now it's just a tougher, I think it's a tougher call because of the less, uh, lesser degree of independence that the special mm -hmm. counsel uh, enjoys under these regulations. But yes. it's the, essentially the same standard. Okay, good to know. Uh, Mr. Ken Starr, thank you very much for joining us with all the information.